Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. This is Shirley with Spirit of Matter in my morning hair there. I don't even know where is it. It's here. <laughs> um, okay, so here is some more tips for the Mars opposing Pluto that is about to unfold. It's here. I saw it here. It's about to unfold. Oh my god, what's going on with my hair? Um and i've been talking about this a lot and i think the the more we talk about it the more we understand there is still more to talk about uh, so first of all uh this for those of you who have stelliums in capricorn this is almost just one month and this is off of your chart for good um but then those of you who have stelliums in Aquarius, I can assist you in um, arranging any dead spells, dead with dignity. <laughs> let's, let's have a commune of dead with dignity because Aquarius is my 12th house. Um, <laughs> not anything like a suicide cult or anything like that, but let's just everybody to have access to the ability to unalive themselves because it's going to be two decades. Um, Mars, Mars opposing Pluto. Let the conflict unfold. Also, if somebody has given you in your life bad advice, nine times out of ten, they have been given the same bad advice to yourself, to themselves. Okay? So that um, I can tell you a story when I give bad advice to someone. I was doing apprenticeship in aromatherapy. And for a very good friend, I talked about the timeline of Holocaust. Now, because I accepted this about my own lineage, I just addressed this heads on. That unraveled a series of triggers from the core. And they were like, no, you can't do this to people. <laughs> okay. So just remember, if somebody gives you bad advice, uh, especially if they are shaman, healer, psychologist, Remember, they give the same bad advice to themselves. They are hard on you because nine times out of ten, they are hard on themselves. So, what I've seen uh, occurring in this course around uh, Mars Pluto is that people don't feel they have too much support because this is a direct confrontation. It's not a confrontation where uh, you have mitigators, usually, um, and it's direct confrontation with the plutocracy authority, and Saturn is in Pisces, so it can be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a, a drug dealer, um, uh, what's more, uh, spies, espionage, uh, think about Julian Assange going out of Belmarsh, finally, but then confronted. Are you part of Peter Wings? Because this has to stop too. Okay. Um, what more Parisian traveling? Okay, so far away traveling, uh, the documents for traveling, passport, citizenships, uh, bureaucracy of immigration. Okay, this is where you confront something. But also refugees, uh, homeless people, okay? This is where you confront something um, and this is uh, uh, 180 degree, okay? This is somebody, something is at 12 o'clock from you and at somebody's chart you are the Pluto, at somebody's chart you are the Mars. The gift that Neptune and Sedna provide us, Sedna is reminding us that the way we treat children and women to the extent that we can provide children, childhood, and women to be free, both within and outside of relationships. So for women to be child-free, or for women to be... And also for men, okay? Um, this is the extent to which we will have food as society. Very simply put. Okay? And this is also how society will be treated upon invasion. We're in a world war. That's pretty relevant. And uh, this is just the wisdom, okay, the four to ten to. And Neptune provides grace. Neptune, Neptune here in this context really means you have to surrender 
and allow the conflict to unfold. Don't try to over mitigate the conflict because um, it will cause to you the uh, disease that is difficult to diagnose, which is the shadow side of Neptune. Um, I've seen colleagues of mine, astrologers, because they had successful podcasts and they were sharing a lot of free information and that free information could be used to understand what's going on in the world. They were targeted so much so that they lost ability to speak. They would speak, speak for long hours and now less ability to speak. So literally their power of speech was targeted by these secret cults, okay? By whatever, 2030 or whatever, okay, whatever going on there. Um, and that has been uh, uh, not a lovely sight. I know that most of, in astrology, most of my colleagues are very likely in secret societies. I don't think they have ability to make income without it. And I have living in Israel and have welfare, which is basically Rothschild, okay? I know that it's my money and my taxes, but it compounds based on those practices that I'm trying to abolish. Uh, and yet, for to work, I cannot be in slavery. I can only do work that is supportive of me and society. This is how I got to be welfare days. Um, so here, my best advice to you is to allow the conflict to unfold, to surrender into what basically is the state of conflict. Um, the death and transformation. But another tip, I have seen that with dignity, we haven't reached even Pluto in Aquarius. I have seen that with dignity coming up a lot. I know it's a lot of triggering issue. I, unfortunately, the part, at least the part of the family that I live with doesn't understand this at all. Um, and I am half Dutch and by our society, we have more understanding that the accessibility to end life with dignity allows the people to expand their choice in life okay to continue on whether it's a struggle and unfortunately the many people think oh if i had the ability to do that uh, i would uh, uh, i would have done that long ago not necessarily so because suddenly you would have autonomy over your body that you may have not in other times and sovereignty for to decide and that could sustain you for another moment and another moment and another moment where the helplessness of what caused you to feel suicidal would be alleviated by the access to choice I'm not saying this is for all people um, but I think that as Pluto is culminating Capricorn and approaches to Aquarius, this is going to be um, a very important. Pluto is going to spend 20 years in Aquarius. It's a Saturn sign. Saturn right now is still in the sign of medicine, healthcare, hidden uh, diseases, uh, and mental health uh, addictions, and so on. And Pisces are so often accused of being kind of uh, helpless. But if you need, understand the ocean, you understand you have to have great surrender because the waves have their course. And you have to let the waves have their course. You can swim against the stream of society, but you, which is the duality of Pisces. You swim against the stream of society, but at the same time there are waves that take their course um, in you also within society if you have like Pisces 11th house or from you know meet heaven Pisces um, then this you might be known a person that is both going against the stream but also very very much affected by the waters okay by the uh, the waves of okay society um, that's just the duality of Pisces and Saturn there um, is placing tremendous importance on the accessibility of that with dignity, particularly for the hidden, the not so visible um, conditions. Because it, in a dual way, uh, the ability to access choice, this Jupiter, this rules Pisces, about life and death, 
allows to expand Jupiter on life. Unfortunately, most religions, segments of society, not understand it. The only good talk I heard about this was Tom Jacobs, who talks about um, uh, preventing suicide, and he says that in cases where suicide is uh, uh, an act of uh, asserting one's sovereignty or taking control of one's life, uh, which is all cases, mind you, okay, um, you say, oh, people may scream for attention, may scream for help. What is help? Help is so that you can choose life, right? So, uh, in those cases, no, person is not punished after they commit suicide. If you have loved ones, if in Capricorn we had dealt with this issue, in Aquarius, even more. Because Aquarius is all-encompassing. Capricorn is like, oh, you want to be somebody, you want to do something with your life. Then if you go to the more Aquarian places, which is where I have gone to, okay? I went to academia not to make uh, somebody of myself, but to retreat. And Saturn Indian rules both my 11th and uh, 12th house, okay? It's to alleviate my mental health issues when I was in normal workplace. And a sense of meaning and purpose. Um, uh, traveling similar in fashion okay but Saturn can be strict uh, on that um, and so with, a, with Capricorn you can go to your Aquarius house and have some retreat okay from there when Pluto is going, going over your Aquarius house you cannot run from Pluto okay because what happens after after Capricorn, you climb to the top of the mountain, you have built something, but you have to let it go. You have built something, but you have to let it go. You can no longer go back to the to that top of that mountain. It's something that it was important for you to do in your life, but it's not like you can go back there, and you know have uh, the support there or something like that is not necessarily and even not at all think about what you build in capricorn is for example you facing standing up to the pope and saying no you are were in charge of inquisition i don't support that and then you have to stand your ground in aquarius so of course you cannot go to church for support right that is for the mountain that you build in capricorn um and now it's going to be all encompassing. This means that um, masses upon masses of people will need to have access to that with dignity in order to choose life. And this is one of my predictions for um, actually the ingress. The Mars opposition Pluto, because it brings issues of life and death, um, and because the death can be violent. And you, what you deal with is violence. Okay, there's extreme form of violence um, that people deal with. Then, uh, of course, death with dignity becomes an issue that is important. Um, and last time Pluto was in Aquarius, we had the guillotine, which was more humane way to have mass killing, uh, the Pluto opposition to that point would be Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which was not so humane um, as it was predicted to be because of the margins. Okay, uh, relatively few people die immediate uh, death uh, in A-bombs. So, definitely the discourse of having accessibility to modes of that even when you think about now the people that are kidnapped the people that came back from from those situations currently the way the the mental health services it's more humane to kill them and this is global it's more humane to kill them and i don't know why this is so but it doesn't matter now um, and society must face the fact that so many things that need to change and so many structures that need to support humanity that don't exist currently 
that for some people who cannot wait it out, who cannot wait until people understand why they cannot work after they've been through trauma that they cannot even talk about, not because they shy, because sometimes it's inaccessible, and because it's in hidden facets, then a lot of people are going to need um, access to this. So this is the discourse that um, I think we should have, because if you are one of these people that cannot hear about it, cannot this, cannot that, you might be witnessing violent death, not necessarily of yourself, uh, but of loved ones, where you say, it's so bad, I had, um, I'm not going to talk about the name, because this is a personal story, and uh, met in academia a person that whose mother was sick for many, many years, and because she did not sign papers that she would have to renew every year with the cost of a fee, uh, that she agrees to remove her from uh, life support, uh, for years, they couldn't, they couldn't do it. This was so traumatic on the soul of the person, the psyche of the person. Um, one, they were also in this cult of Memento Mori and Remember Your Death, but it was so, so dramatically horrid um, and a lot of anger, both at the mother and the situation and the helplessness for years and years and years. Because you see someone suffering with no... There's no, there's no way forward, but also no way back. You're in between worlds. Um, I don't know this person of what it was before, but right now, if you are the type of person who hears this and think, ah, oh, we don't really need uh, that with dignity, we need to choose life, with this, or if I had a way, and so on, you might be uh, uh, witnessing something quite horrendous. Okay? Um, in that regard. And if you are the people, especially for the Piscean, okay, for how you deal with the Piscean archetype, they tend to blame the victim. If you are the people who tend to still are in the paradigm of God only helps those who help themselves when, you, when the person has been trying to reach out in everywhere and none of these places for respecting of their dignity, you might be in for some horrendous, um, uh, wake up calling because Mars Pluto doesn't play and Mars is supported by Neptune this means that the, the Mars struggle is going viral and right now with the stories I hear that have to do with death with dignity where access to death with dignity could help them alleviate the struggle of having to create structures that currently don't exist you cannot return the kidnapped people to the same structures they were kidnapped by. Not societally, not mentally, not psychologically, and not architecton, uh, architect, architecton uh, from terms of the architecture. Okay? All of this must change. And when they come back, for many of them, they do prefer to end suffering because they don't have access to... To this is not because they don't want to live, it's because if they don't have access to life and you cannot provide to them access to life, you cannot stop the hurt that sometimes is in hidden form, then at least provide death, okay? And if you are, um, let's say, the, uh, the, the expiration date to our dissociation from this situation is due. And this is what this Mars opposition Pluto is about. Um, this uh, Pluto is done trying to transform society from within the system. And now all must collapse for to create something that is supportive of society. Um... The particular danger is when some of this is on our blind spot. I will have Pluto ingress into my 12th house. When Saturn was there, I ran into a lot. Okay? Saturn in his home sign is not easy. And I went to a country where the Saturn is in it's the home sign. Um, it's the sign of the architect. Okay? 
but there's a reason that you are, that you are an architect because the current structures do not fit you. Okay, you usually want to build something new, which is Aquarius, it's not Capricorn, it's want to build or to preserve old structures, um, but to build something new when the current structure is not fit and Saturn is structure. Okay? Current structure not fit, it means your housing, your upbringing, your society. It, there's a reason why people say I would do everything but Saturn in its home sign again. Um, so, and it's the type of a situation, that even if you get all the help in the world, it's not enough because the structure needs to change. Um, and this is anti anti uh, antithetical to Capricorn. Capricorn is like you have to suffer it. You have to stick it through. Okay, you have to deal with that. But, uh, but the things that you cannot deal with that, you go to Aquarius. Because you understand you have to adjust society to the individual, not the individual to society. This is the lesson for Aquarius. For me, it was one tough lesson because I didn't believe society could adjust to me. And so, you can imagine that when such result where I cannot adjust myself to society, but I do not believe society will ever adjust itself to me. And even if I go seek help, we told, well, society cannot adjust to you. Okay, then what, what is created there is something that I guess this Pluto in 12th house will unfold. And I... I am myself sometimes a bit scared to look because that's a lot. Um, so, yeah.